At the beginning of the movie, a longtime author and illustrator of children's books, Mira Ray, is working in a coffee shop on illustrations. Warning Be Aware of Spoilers Mira has steered her life in the correct direction and is content with what she has been accomplishing. Mira and John Wright have been together for a while and are currently dating. Witnessing their affection is adorable. Sadly, John is tragically killed on the road next to the coffee shop shortly after their brief encounter, and Mira witnesses it. Nothing could put things right moving forward, and she could see her world coming crumbling down. After two years, Mira is an established author of a children's book with illustrations, and she has won numerous awards for the work. She briefly resides with her parents before relocating with her sister Susie to New York City. Mira hasn't recovered from John's death and has been emotionally depressed for a while despite experiencing success in her line of work. A person becomes that way after losing a long-term companion, and Mira is attempting to cope with her sadness. It takes a lot of time for her to adjust to John's death, but as time passes, she is gradually doing so. Even though they are aware that their departed lover isn't around to react, Myra's acquaintance from a nearby pub gives her the notion to speak to their deceased partner. She would feel lighter in her heart simply by letting their thoughts be known. Mira takes this seriously because she knows that she has been wanting to talk to John for the previous two years. Rob doesn't consider himself to be pessimistic, but the breakup of his engagement a week before the wedding put him in a poor place, and he has never had the confidence to be in a relationship since. Rob is working very hard to keep his separation from affecting him, but his anguish is genuine. A feature about Celine Dion has been given to Rob Burns, a music writer for the New York Chronicle. Rob may not be a fan of Celine's music, but he starts listening to it for the sake of his latest piece. As their supervisor had instructed, Rob and his co-workers were given new office phone numbers in the interim. Mira starts sending texts to John's previous number so they may talk. Mira reveals her innermost thoughts and feelings about the previous two years through these messages. She begins describing everything that makes her miss him the most in the immediate environment. To feel better, Mira lowers her guard and expresses her frustrations as much as she can. Mira is happy with the fact that she won't ever hear back from this number. She believes that she has to use this as a coping mechanism for her grief since, up to this point, nothing else has allowed her to temporarily forget the agony she is experiencing. By texting John's number, she was able to connect with him without fear of rejection because he was someone who was intimately familiar with her. At first, Rob is astounded to see someone writing a message to this number, spilling their heart out, and doing so. But Rob thinks he can feel the sorrow in the text messages being sent by whoever it is. He feels the person's distress and knows they probably turn to texting for comfort. Because he believes the message is being sent sincerely and does not want to be perceived as being dishonest, Rob never replies. By reading these texts, he learns more about the person. Rob is curious about the person's personality as he starts to get all the texts. The communications reveal that the person will be meeting a potential date, he discovers. Rob reads all the words and experiences a range of emotions. He senses a bond between them and can only hope that the person messaging from the other side would be equally fascinating. After not going out since John's death, Mira finally goes on a date. She texts John's phone with the location and time of the date in order to calm her anxiety because she feels totally blank and unprepared for the encounter. When Rob arrives at the specified location, he is curious. He seeks to identify the texter by face. When his date left, Mira texted the number, so he wonders if she is the one texting him after catching a sight of her at the pub. However, Rob's gut tells him she is the texter even though he isn't persuaded. After a lengthy pause, Celine Dion is preparing to start her tour, and Rob gets to meet her for his piece. They discuss the emotions that Rob has been picking up from the texts he is reading. Since their breakup, Rob hasn't had this kind of emotion, and Celine shows him how to feel all the emotions associated with love. Rob is fascinated by Celine's capacity for such intense love, and this curiosity translates to him. 
his willingness to take a risk is increased by this. Rob feels compelled to meet with the texter. In the text, Rob mentions going to the classical opera in the hopes of seeing the person he spotted in the pub. After watching the opera performance each day, he eventually finds her. Rob and Mira connect deeply and are immediately drawn to one another. She's been sending Rob texts, but he won't tell her because he knows she'll be furious. At this early stage of their shared attraction, he wants to avoid any dispute. The couple starts dating after exchanging phone numbers. Mira and Rob are both enthusiastic. Due to the fact that they both wind up talking about their breakups and ex-partners the entire night, their first date is a success. A new level of intimacy is experienced by them. Due to their exchange of texts, Rob believes he knows her. Rob is able to be more empathetic to Mira because of how long they have been friends. Celine gives Mira a job to create a tour flyer at Rob's request. Mira is startled when Celine unexpectedly approaches her. She's not upset since she knows that this work will give her the boost she needs to come out of her creative rut. The fact that Rob and Mira are content with their relationship and believe that nothing will go wrong makes them both happy. The following morning, as they snuggle up together, Mira notices her texts on his computer screen. Rob is accused of taking John away by Mira, who feels taken advantage of and humiliated. This is her way of saying that although the writings were intended for John, who has been deceased for the past two years, by reading them and penetrating her emotions, he took their connection. Rob makes an effort to make things right, but Mira is unwilling to continue their connection and they part ways. Rob feels misunderstood, but because Mira has already decided what she wants, he is unsure of how to make amends. To save his love for Mira, he publishes an article about how receiving her texts made him feel and how it helped him rediscover his belief in love. Her remarks helped Rob, who had given up on finding the perfect kind of love, realize how much he cared for her. Mira is unconcerned by his gesture, but Celine and Mira have a discussion about how it's okay to let go of one obvious untruth without letting it ruin what she believes is right for her. Celine conducts a good woman-to-woman -woman conversation with someone who has lost their true love. She recognizes the suffering Mira is experiencing and gives it all its due. Rob makes an attempt to win her back by planning a spectacular gesture, but she never shows up at the park. Rob visits her in her apartment. He aspires to reclaim her. Rob believes he will find Mira at the location where the opera is run. He eventually runs into her on the sidewalk, where they converse for a while. If Rob is willing to accept that Mira will always love John and that he will remain a part of her life, she is prepared to rekindle her relationship with him. Although she is aware that she will eventually move on and forget about John, she wants Rob to understand that John will always hold a particular place in her heart. She anticipates Rob acting in the same manner as Mira and John, who have never kept secrets. They were almost destroyed by the deceit about the messages, and she doesn't want any more surprises to go wrong. Rob and Mira kissed each other to declare their love for one another. Thank you for watching.